Hello everyone, um, good morning. Um, my name is Sarah Morgan and I'm from the EKC group. Hello, I'm Shabana, I'm also from the EKC group. And we've got um, quite a few colleagues of ours in the audience today, so hello to all of them and they obviously took a huge part in this action research project. Um, okay, so um, my role is the Director of Maths and um, when designing our action research project, what we really wanted to think about was how to improve outcomes for all of our students. And that's why we chose the theme of Mark, as it is our core belief that um, improving student learning was obviously um, our key group. And so um, we felt mastery was the right um, theme. So the other issue that we had, well, the other challenge we had was the size of our group. So we are six, um, post 16 so we are larger than this but post 16 we are six community-based colleges and we have around 69 maths teachers and 12,000 learners across our group so um obviously that's a formidable challenge um already and this is a quick sketch of groups like a little so we decided um the challenge already to improve teaching and learning across the group amplified by the size of our organizations and the fact that we've got lots of individual business units we decided to look at um, collaborative planning, creating centrally um, designed resources and collaborative planning meetings. So if I give you a little bit of background about our business units that we're working with, um, oh, I've, I've forgotten the order of the slides, so let me give you a little bit of a background about what we decided about mastery. Um, so it was decided very early on um, when we looked, we all met as leaders and we discussed what mastery would look like and I am in very much agreement with lots of things that were already said on presentations that we decided um, to create our own interpretation of mastery. We, we decided to think about what it meant for us and key to us was responsive teaching. Um, in our quip, we'd highlighted that far too many lessons um, didn't respond to learners' starting points. And we needed to acknowledge what students already knew and then teach them to their gaps. We also wanted to develop reasoning and problem solving because often lessons were fluency heavy. So practicing um, skills that um, students had already met in school, but not enough time was dedicated to going on to those reasoning and problem solving questions um, that really made them think. And then lastly, to develop a conceptual understanding throughout embedding the use of visual representations. Okay. And the challenge we had across the group was that um, in, in the different colleges that we work with, um, there are different delivery models. So uh, for some colleges, they've got discrete maths departments where they've got a team of um, people that just, just teach maths. And then in other colleges, we've got vocational teachers that um, teach maths for us as well. So we, we've got um, a mix across the board. We've also got, and this um, came out in our findings, uh, different levels of solid, uh, subject knowledge. So um, varying levels of um, highest qualification in maths. Different people have different responsibilities. So obviously we've got people that are purely responsible for maths, but also we've got heads of department that maths comes under their remit, but they've got other responsibilities, other people with whole college responsibilities. Uh, lots of people with different backgrounds. So um, people that have taught maths in FE for a long, long time, people that have taught maths in schools, but then also people that are coming brand new into FE. Um, I'll think of one example who was a plumbing lecturer, joined us in FE as a plumbing lecturer and picked up a maths class and obviously um, could be quite overwhelming. And then different experiences. Um, so coming from a range of vocational backgrounds or coming from um, different teaching backgrounds, as I've just described. So they were the challenges. So what we decided to do at a group level was to um, think about how collaborative planning would work for us. So in the summer months, um, all of the principals across the group nominated people that were recognised as strong maths deliverers. And we made a team and that team um, focused on creating the central resources. So we very much explored what mastery meant for us. We also explored the different pathways. So we've got different qualifications, as you will will at GCSE, functional skills, entry level qualifications. And when we talk about pathways, we're very much talking about um, a GCSE pathway, functional skills, level one pathway, et cetera. And then um, we designed um, centrally planned resources embedding what we felt was a mastery approach. 
and using um, lots of the professional development that we'd had. So things like Craig Barton's worked examples, etc. And then we embedded in our timetables um, either fortnightly or weekly collaborative planning meetings with the focus of those meetings being supporting teachers to explore those resources, discussing how they might use those resources to enhance their lessons, discussing what questions they might use, how they might implement, how they might run their lessons. So really about sharing good practice, using these resources as the focus point. And the intent of all of this was to improve all of our students' outcomes over time. We very much from the beginning said this is not going to be a silver bullet overnight fix. We're, um, we're dedicating ourselves to this, but in year one, we, we know that it's going to take more than one year. Um, to ensure a consistent um, high quality of teaching and learning across our group, um, to continually develop the subject knowledge of all staff. We felt this very much was um, not just about developing the quality of our teaching and learning lessons, but also upskilling our whole community um, with the maths. And then finally, continually improving interaction and network between staff across our group. So that is it from me. I'll stop sharing and pass you over to Shabana. Thank you, Sarah. So I'm now going to be talking about the, the method that we used and um, what the research actually um, involved and the outcomes, of course. Um, so the main method of uh, research was a survey that we um, shared across all our five colleges, six now, but Ashford was not part of uh, the group when we started um, collecting data in January. In addition to that, we also used um, collaborative planning meetings that were used um, across the colleges and we tried to observe what was going on there. We also had learning walks as well as um, analysing data from assessment checkpoints. We also had team teaching sessions across the group that helped us um, understand how collaborative resources were being used and what teachers actually felt about that. So. Um, with regards to um, the sub-questions that we considered, we looked at how teachers were using shared resources. We also looked at how teachers were responding to collaborative planning meetings, whether um, learners were responding to our collaborative um, planning and also whether there was any resistance to teachers um, using collaborative planning meetings. Um, the strengths of the PowerPoint, uh, of, the, of the whole collaborative planning was very evident. It was very clear that most teachers were very confident in using centrally planning resources. They found them very helpful. When asked to comment about the whole process, it was overwhelmingly positive. One respondent said, I'm very pleased to see that there is more support out there to tutors and more resources that we can use. So as you can see, it was working. We also asked uh, all the tutors whether they were confident in using centrally planned resources. And as you can see, most of them was, they were all confident, but there was a small pocket who was not that confident and some not confident at all in using centrally planned resources. Collaborative planning meetings, as we said earlier, those um, fortnightly planning meetings are an integral part of our collaborative planning process. 60% of the respondents that we asked, they said that they actually attend those collaborative planning meetings and 80% thought they were helpful. One respondent said, I have little mass experience, as Sarah said, we've got varying backgrounds, varying subject knowledge and using collaborative planning actually helped them to understand where we were coming from. Team teaching, another important part of the collaborative planning process, 49% of the respondents said that they had an opportunity to team teach across the group and of those who had not, 50% said that they would like to um, have that um, opportunity and because they, they actually thought it was really helpful. Quotes, it, is, it was interesting to see how some resources can be used differently by other teaching staff. I think we all agree that everyone has their own teaching style and using the same resources but in different ways. So how do we make the most of the mastery resources that we're using. So another one said it provided me with the opportunity to see how other tutors manage and operate within the classroom. So varying background, varying experience, team teaching actually helped them. However, as with everything, we highlighted some key learning points. They were a recurring theme. 
there were communication issues highlighted throughout the survey and for talking to colleagues and for learning walks and team teaching. There were also issues around the availability and the quality of the resources that were being written and also it was interesting to see how some teachers who were not engaging in the initial planning process responded to um, centrally planned maths resources. So we thought for us that those points were really important to focus on. We made the most of the lockdown, so that was really good. Well, good in inverted commas. We actually had more time to think about what we were doing and how we could implement changes using those key learning points. So when we went into lockdown, we used our action research and the key learning points, and we looked at how we could implement some strategies to help. Um, so the first problem we identified was communication. Uh, most of the respondents said that they had not received, well, 24%, but we only had 33 out of 69 teachers responded. So 29%, 24% said they had not received any support in using centrally planned resources. 28 of those said that they did not know whether they could adapt or how they could work with them. Many said that they did not know. Um, they were not confident in adapting if they knew that they could adapt, but they weren't that confident in adapting those resources. 37% of the respondents were not attending collaborative planning meetings and they felt out of the loop and for us that was really important and a key learning point. So what have we done to address that during the lockdown? We have um, created teams with pathways and we have had teams across all the six colleges now with our new, I think we have a colleague from Ashford who's here and they joined us in January and they are now part of the team of collaborative planning meetings and we have put online um, team sessions and regular planning meetings where we're actually talking about how centrally planned resources would lo look like for next year. We have had very good feedback so far. Most of our teachers are engaging with the planning process, they're talking to each other every week and that's really helped. Second problem we identified was clearly the availability and the quality of the resources that were being written. Now with the, with the availability of resources, it was quite easy to, to, to remedy because we could just say, well, according to pathways, we're going to write resources according to pathways, and we're going to make sure that these resources are there for September 2020. Slightly different for the quality because that was an important key learning point for us. Um, it, many of the respondents said that the resources, centrally planned resources, were not catering for lower ability students and that they didn't feel that those resources were appropriate and therefore they were using their own resources. Um, for us, that's, that was a really key learning point because our quip also say, our group's quip say that many of our teachers were not identifying key learning points and starting points of our student and we were not catering lessons and pitching them at the right level. So that sort of identified a key training um, point for our teachers on why the centrally planned resources were pitching to that level, identifying the right starting points of your student, identifying those weaknesses, again tying in with the mastery approach of teaching and catering for every student and every learning need which can be try quite tricky, but we have tried to implement that in our centrally planned resources. And how our teachers now use that is a training process. So for us, that was very important. Um, I mean, an example of, of FE teachers trying to teach times table to students with level two, we, they, they have come to us with a level two or level three, they know their times table, so we don't need to go back to those, do we? Um, they've had them all their life. So, Identifying the qualifications of our teachers was an important point here because it sort of highlighted the various starting points of, of maths knowledge and experience and, and experience. And it was interesting to note that the, the, the more qualified the teachers in the group were, the less resist, the more resistant they were to centrally planned resources. So that was a key learning point and we are going to um, address that. We have addressed that through training and discussions and talking about teachers. And we've already seen a massive change so far. We've seen improvement and everything is working fairly well at the moment. Um, 
So to address that, as I said, we've now put a robust process with guidance documents outlining every single element of centrally planned resources and how to use those centrally planned resources. Meetings every week are helping discussions and, and, and embedding those process within the practice. We've used previous year's resources as a starting point because there was no point in starting from scratch, but of course we're improving that and the teams are now engaging with the re those resources as they're improving, so that's helped. And also training, as I said earlier, we are, we've put together some brilliant training online sessions, Craig Barton coming up soon, so we are there. Um, so in conclusion, I think it has brought us together as a team. Uh, we are much stronger now and we are definitely going to continue with collaborative planning. We have learned quite a lot from this action research and I think we have been able to make recommendations for English teachers as well so that we could, so that we could um, continue with that. So if you've got any further questions, we're here now on the chat and I'll leave you to Lou. Thank you very much.